um, as you just sort of go out into the computational universe in a kind of arbitrary way, um, you're much more able to, to go and find things that are truly surprising out there. So, so anyway, that I think sort of it will be possible to do a lot of things that are to us still very surprising. So, um, you know, I, I, I think one of the things that, um, uh, for example, being able to sort of do creative things kind of uh, uh, on the fly, on demand, rather than having to um, uh, and, and sort of make it so that creativity becomes this economically cheap thing um, just by sort of mining this computational universe. That will be something that will be very commonplace in sort of the mass customization of everything. Um, and uh, being able to take it from the point where our sort of uh, civilization is set up where everything has very sort of rigid structure because that's the only way we can sort of foresee and understand what's going to happen to something uh, that looks much more complex. So sort of a simple analogy, a simple sort of uh, example would be, you know, how do you get people from here to there where you can have trains that run at specific times, kind of this periodic sequence of times for trains, or you can do more elaborate computation and you can have sort of these little... Uh, uh, little cars zipping around or something that just arrive at exactly the right time given the knowledge of, you know, all the congestion and all the things that people uh, are needing to do and so on. And it will, from the outside, that kind of, uh, that thing will look much more complex. It will look like uh, the sort of, uh, um, it will look much harder to understand. There won't be sort of an easy, uh, if, if one was trying to figure out sort of the laws by which the, by which the world works, and one was sort of observing what's happening, when the train is running periodically, you can kind of see there's an obvious law by which the world works. I mean, I think one of the things that is sort of uh, interesting to think through is when all this computation, when all these capabilities at the molecular level and so on, when that all becomes, you know, really easy, really cheap, sort of really kind of free to do, when sort of creativity is, is, is cheap and, and free and you just go out into the computational universe and pluck things out and so on. So then the big question is, so what do you actually do? What, uh, what do you choose to do? And I think that um, as we kind of think about sort of the automation of different kinds of human-like activities, uh, whether it's uh, sort of the automation from, uh, you know, from times past of many of the sort of physical things that people had to do by hand and then they had, you know, bulldozers and so on, to the kinds of uh, things like uh, people having to remember everything themselves to whether they have, uh, you know, extensive searchable archives and and so on, you know, we, we can now increasingly sort of outsource our human memory. I don't know if uh, I, for example, have been, you know, I record, have been re recording every keystroke I type for the last 20 something years. So I have kind of a, a, a well outsourced uh, uh, way of, 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 uh, of remembering things, for example. And increasingly, all of these various sort of human like tasks um, will be able to be sort of outsourced and automated. And then the question is so the sort of the thing that remains is so what do you choose to do? And uh, I think this is the place where one sort of has to realize that there, so that there's an increasing emphasis on kind of history and the thread of history and how we sort of, uh, and that sort of helps to define the purposes that we choose to, to pursue as we go into the future. It's kind of another interesting thought experiment is to ask the question when we have all these complicated processes that are going on and uh, uh, they're all doing all these difficult computations and, and for example, one of the things that came out from NKS is sort of understanding that these complex computations are, uh, there isn't really a bright line between sort of intelligence of the human type and complicated computations. It's like, you know, when we say, you know, the weather has a mind of its own. That's not just one of these aphorism kinds of things. That really is uh, an indication of something that's really just true about the world, that there is sort of computation going on in the fluid dynamics of the weather that in a sense is, is no less complex than the computations that we can expect are going on in our brains and, and so on. There's sort of a, a layer of computational equivalence of, of these kinds of systems. So one of the ways that, um, uh, so, so th this, this kind of, um, uh, makes us makes us realize that you know when we see these things going on in nature that are very complex and so on, um, we can sort of uh, they're not obviously uh, in any in any sort of fundamental sense different from uh, the the kinds of computations that are going on in our brains. What is the difference? Well, the difference is that sort of our human-like intelligence has this kind of thread of history that connects it to sort of all the culture and all the specific human knowledge that we have. Um, and that does not exist for sort of an arbitrary computation that might be going on in nature. And I suspect as we sort of go forward in sort of the, the human condition, so to speak, that there's sort of going to be an increasing focus on this idea of, so of all these computations that we might choose to do, which ones are we really going to do? And those are the ones that are sort of connected to this thread of history that we have. Those are the ones um, 
uh, that, that kind of uh, makes sense for us as humans with our human history um, to do. And it's kind of like, uh, you know, when we think about the extraterrestrials and so on, we say, you know, how do we recognize the extraterrestrials? How do we recognize whether there's extraterrestrial intelligence and so on? And we might say, well, if we see something complex going on out there in the cosmos, it must represent something that came out from sort of an intelligence a bit like ours. I think this is simply not a correct conclusion. Um, I think that uh, sort of this, this kind of complexity that is associated with intelligence um, is sort of just a, a feature of sophisticated computation, and that's a pretty ubiquitous thing. Uh, so there's, there has to be something when we sort of distinguish our human-like intelligence, it's distinguished very much by these sort of threads of history and so on. So, so anyway, I think, uh, you know, at a, at a more practical level, as we sort of see more of our sort of human-like activities being successfully outsourced and surpassed um, by, uh, uh, by sort of automated systems, um, the thing that kind of survives is this question of, so what do we actually want to do um, as humans? What's this kind of continuing thread of purpose? Um, I think uh, it's sort of an interesting question as one sort of thinks through kind of when one understands this sort of technology and science direction, when one tries to think through what does this really mean for kind of the, the future of the human condition, um, that's, a, uh, that's a separate challenge. And I can see that we're, we're running over the time that we expected. So I'm, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to wimp out of that challenge, at least for now. Um, and uh, although uh, it's, it's one that's really interesting and uh, I'm kind of starting to realize that I should really think about this since I think I understand the science and I'm beginning to understand some of the technology. It's sort of, uh, it's sort of something that um, uh, it's really worth kind of trying to predict what, what will happen. I mean, I've, I've always found it fun, you know, I'm, as I get older, I kind of watch what happens to all the predictions that I made in earlier years about uh, uh, how different things in technology and sort of society and so on would develop. And uh, I think I've had a pretty good record I, I, um, uh, uh, of different kinds of things that uh, sort of I thought would happen and, you know, what actually does end up happening. Um, so now I think there are some really challenging things to figure out um, when in, the, in the sort of future world where, in a sense, computation and the things that can be constructed from it become free. What, what sort of, how does, that, how does that really change how things work? And that's sort of a, a future challenge to figure out.